Hello, and welcome to The Daily Space for today, Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. I am your host, Annie Wilson, and I am back. Most Mondays through Fridays, our team will be here putting science into your brain. Usually Wednesdays are for Rocket Roundup, and it's been yet another week without launches. But space still happens. Let's get to it, shall we? So, this week you may notice a theme. It's SpaceX. It's all SpaceX. This past Friday, SpaceX tested the tower escape system for the Crew Dragon pad at, for the Crew Dragon at pad 39 Alpha. Uh, the video, which I'm gonna play for you in a second, shows the emergency escape basket sliding down a cable on the tower at the launch pad in the event of an emergency, astronauts and ground teams can quickly get away from dangerous conditions should there be a pre-launch accident from the Falcon 9 rocket or the Crew Dragon spacecraft. And here's this video. There's no sound, so I'm gonna to continue to talk over it. So each basket, which can carry three people, were modified from the space shuttle program. At the end of the slide line, the personnel get into an armored vehicle called an MRAP, which they would drive to safety. This is basically the same plan as used during the shuttle program, but the updated baskets will leave the tower from 260 foot level, which is 70 feet higher than what was used during the shuttle era. An escape from the Crew Dragon's Super Draco engines would take less than a second, according to SpaceX. However, for safety reasons, the capsule escape engines are not activated until just before the start of fueling in the final countdown. NASA says that the Crew Dragon's first piloted mission with astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin on board could launch as soon as mid to late May from Pad 39 Alpha. The astronauts will fly to the space station for an expedition that could last several weeks up to several months then return to Earth for a parachute-assisted splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean just off of Florida's east coast. And there is that up-armored vehicle, the MRAP, driving away with everybody hopefully safely inside. So when I saw this on, I'm not going to lie, when I saw this on Twitter, I'm like, this is just going to be like a fire drill, right? But fire drills don't involve zip lines so this is actually pretty cool and for those wondering what MRAP stands for that is a <laughs> mine resistant ambush protected vehicle that they have literally painted white which you know you know yeah so speaking of SpaceX uh, the last Dragon 1 capsule returned to the Earth yesterday after spending about a month attached to the Navier port on the Harmony module, aka Node 2, of the International Space Station. Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, commanded the Canada Arm 2 to move the spacecraft into the release position. The command to release the Dragon from the robotic arm was issued at 1306 UTC. The Dragon performed three departure burns under the control of NASA controllers in Houston using its onboard Draco thrusters. After clearing the ISS, control of the Dragon was turned over to SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California. The deorbit burn was conducted at 1758 UTC. After shedding the unpressurized trunk, which is full of junk, <laughs> Dragon splashed down off the coast of Baja, California, about 815 kilometers south of Los Angeles. It will be returned to the port of Los Angeles for initial cargo unloading, and then transferred to SpaceX's McGregor, Texas facility to have the remainder of the 4,000 pounds of cargo unloaded. This marks the end of the CRS-20 missions, which began on March 6th on a Falcon 9 rocket from Slick 40 from Cape Canaveral. And um, some of the cargo, some of the cargo that is going to be unloaded immediately, it contains things like 
mice and probably plant, plant samples. So that's why not all of it is being unloaded at SpaceX's uh, facility. It's going to be unloaded early so the mice, you know, can be studied and not have extra stuff. All right. And still speaking of SpaceX, I told you there was a theme. It's been that kind of day. One final story about how space is hard. Early Friday, April 3rd, SpaceX was conde conducting a pressure test of the third Starship protocol when something, well, went wrong. According to a tweet from Elon Musk, this happened because the tanks in the top half were loaded before the tanks in the lower half were, causing it to crumple and then undergo rapid, unplanned disassembly. He went on to say, if you lose pressure control on the rocket propellant tanks, you're doomed anyway, so might as well go all in. Starship SN4 is already under construction. Space is hard. Space is really hard. And there you see it all crumpled up. They've already started scavenging parts um, for from what uh, they've already started scavenging parts from SN3 that were able to be recovered. And up, oh, they're just playing it in reverse, and here it goes again. So that's what it looked like, and then there it goes, crumpling. All that white stuff that falls off, that's that's literally ice of some sort. And it, it fell over. It fell over. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it crumpled. It imploded. It didn't really implode. It didn't explode. It just crumpled. It's wild. It's wild. Is it going to do it again? LN2. So they did the test with liquid nitrogen, too. Um, yeah. All right. So COVID. We can't get away from COVID, can we? As COVID-19 continues to have an impact on launches, with the U.S. Space Force announcing the, that the launch of GPS-3 SV-03 aka GPS-33, not joking, can't make that up, from Cape Canaveral is being postponed from later this month until sometime no earlier than June 30th. We do not make this decision lightly, however, given our GPS constellation remains strong, we have the opportunity to make a deliberate decision to maintain our mission assurance posture without introducing additional health risk to personnel or mission risk to the launch said Lieutenant General John F. Thompson, Space and Mission Space and Missile Systems Center Commander and Program Executive Officer for Space. The GPS-3 satellites will bring three times better accuracy and up to eight times more resistant to jamming than their predecessors. There are still plans to complete the three GPS launches in 2020 while doing what's necessary to protect the health of personnel involved in the mission. GPS-3 SV-03 will be launched into an operational orbit by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The satellite will be the second national security space launch mission to be launched on a, space in, on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and the first SS, NSSL mission where a launch service provider is recovering a booster. Oof. Okay. So here's this graph. Here's a graph. And I want you to keep in mind that this graph contains data from two years. And um, sorry, I just need to catch my breath. So what's up with this graph? 
it feels like there haven't been as many launches this so far this year as there was in this point in 2019. So yesterday I took a no look at the numbers to see what was going on. And I was surprised to see that there have actually been five more launch attempts in 2020 than there were by early April 2019. Five more launches doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that's actually 25% more launches. And I track, we track the launches by the country where they take place, the spaceport, not by the country owning the thing that being launched or the country of origin for the rocket. Let's say the Soyuz rockets used by Arian Space. Um, as you can see on this graph, both the US and China have had more launch attempts so far this year, while most of the others have had the same number of launches this year as they did by early April 2019. And at this point last year, there have been no launch attempts in Russia, which is why they only have an orange bar in the graph. So it's, it's felt slow this year but it really hasn't been. And I was definitely surprised to see the impact that essentially the pandemic had. It's like, I was really, really expecting to see fewer launch attempts. And by launch attempts, that's successes, failures, everything. Uh, we tried, Keeper and I tried to separate the failures and the partial failures from successful launches and it, it just got too messy when really it, um, when really I wanted to show the just launch attempts. I did wanted to add 2018 to this and I might for next week because it does take, it takes a lot of time to enter the, st enter the data in. It takes time for us to figure out the best way to present the data visually and things of that nature. I want to present data to you in a way that makes sense. And this graph is pretty um, easy to interpret. You've got two, uh, two bars for each country. And yeah, I didn't add in, you know, the minutia, the failures, which would add more colors and more confusion. No, all we really care about is the number of launch attempts because even if a rocket launch fails, it still takes a lot of effort and a lot of work and a lot of planning in getting that rocket off the ground, which is why launch attempts, just counting launch attempts is significant. So yeah, in the future, I'll add 2018. I don't want to say that I'm going to go back and add a whole bunch because then everything just gets kind of noisy. But I was really expecting to see that COVID had a negative impact on our rocket launches when that just hasn't been the case. For the record, I blame SpaceX and Starlink because they were launching like every two weeks and that really was faster than... Um, essentially any other turnaround uh, to the state. So on to the usual graph. On to the usual graph. Um, so to wrap things up, here is the running tally of a few space flight statistics for this, for this current year. So far there has been one toilet burned up in orbit. There are 345 Total new satellites in orbit. These include ones launched from uh, other in-orbit craft like the ISS or uh, spacecraft leaving the ISS. Directly from rocket launches, 331 of those have been launched directly from rocket launches. And as I said, I keep track of orbital launches by where they were launched from, aka spaceport. Here's that breakdown. Total launches this year for 2020 have been 25 with three failures. So 22 successful, three failures. Total attempts by country is USA 9, China 7, French Guiana 2, Russia 2, Kazakhstan 2, New Zealand 1, Japan 1, Iran 1. And your useless space fact for the week. 
On November 9th, 1970, the U.S. launched two bullfrogs into space on the orbiting frog Otholith to study how structures in the inner ear are affected by microgravity. I can't make that up. And I th think that was pointed out. Somebody on Discord pointed that out to me, and I forget who you are, but thank you so much for that. And that pretty much rounds out our show for today. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being freaking awesome. <sighs> thank you for your patience. Um, today's script was written by Dave Ballard and Gordon Dewis. Got it. I got it. And yeah, uh, I've been your host, Annie Wilson, and The Daily Space is produced by Susie Murph. This has been a production of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. And sorry about the green. Uh, and if you want to become a supporter of the show, you can do that through uh, Patreon or subscribing here on Twitch or, you know, donating bits, all the other things. And I'm going to scroll through the chat and see if there are any questions. If you have any additional questions, please use the purple star to make it easier for me to find them. But, um, yeah. And yes, AstroWise, there is a Soyuz launch early, early, early tomorrow. Um, it is so early that I'm not covering it. Um, and scroll all the way back up, all the way back up. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. I apologize for all the noise outside if it's getting picked up. So there was a question about who the um, MRAP, that white up armored truck belongs to that was used in the uh, escape. And Keeper believes that it belongs to the facility, i.e. NASA. And I, I would assume that's correct. They own all of the equipment. SpaceX is literally leasing a pad or two. And Lagadder makes a comment about, look at the junk in my trunk. Yes, I am forever amused by that. I do believe that they just pack the trunk full of garbage. <laughs> and it's burned up in the atmosphere. And yeah. So Astrowise asks, has SpaceX done any simulations to see what would happen to that armored vehicle in the unlikely event that the rocket ignites with humans in the vehicle? Um, I didn't see anything about that. I will honestly say that I didn't dig too deeply either. And... I don't know. Because it's up armored, I imagine that there's probably been some computer simulations ran. But I I honestly don't know. Um it might just be literally better than nothing. <laughs> Which at this point is what a lot of us can just ask for is better than nothing. And yes, rapid unplanned disassembly explosion is totally um, is totally a term that is used. I don't know where it originated, but it sounds very fancy and it is very accurate to you know what happens. It was indeed a rapid unplanned disassembly. So um, so Ark says I think NASA would overlook that test of seeing if it's the up armored vehicles enough to protect the humans inside since it was a standard operating procedure since the shuttle era. Um, if I recall correctly from the tiny bit of reading I did do about this, they had done this test once during the shuttle era, just once. And this was set up after probably after the Challenger disaster. They both start with the C and I get them confused. The one that happened in 86. 
I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about that one. I might be wrong. So, um, do, 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 do. And we already talked about comparing against 2018 as well. Skylap had a steel vault that landed in Australia. No bandicoots or uh, wombats were hurt. Yes, I remember reading about that. Um, giant leap for frog kind. When that was shared on Discord, I was like, I, I just, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. So, um, do 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 do. We all need more space. Um, Dr Lag Adder asks, was this the first time a dragon thingy made a trip to the space station? No, uh, throughout SpaceX's CRS-1 contract, they've used, I think, all or mostly the cargo capsules, the dragon cargo capsules, and this was, they have multiple versions. And this was the cargo one capsule, and it was the last time um, that the Dragon Cargo one is going to be used. They're going to switch to the Dragon Cargo two. I don't know what the difference between the two is. It the the Cargo two might be able to actually dock. That means automatically connect to the ISS without use of the Canada arm. Because right now it has to be birthed, which it needs assistance to be, you know, hooked up to the ISS. Um, I don't know when the first time a dragon thingy made a trip to the space station. That may have been in the early 2000s. But it's it's been a while. So, Miss Town wants to know what garbage means when I say that there's probably garbage in the trunk of the dragon. And yes, garbage means trash and solid human waste. I can't make this up. I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, yeah, the returning dragon is CRS-20. So hello, Bill Nash. Um, and Larry adds other... Some of the trash would be like dirty dish, dirty dishes, which is just the plastic that all of their food is kept in and debris from experiments and things of that nature. Uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, what's the rocket output shuttle versus the Falcon? I, I don't know that Astro wise. I don't. Um, there is totally a measure for that, but I don't, I don't know. Larry reminds me that Challenger failed going up and Columbia failed going down, which is what I do remember. Um, cause I, I do, I was too, I'm too I'm too young to remember when Challenger failed, but I, I know where I was when Columbia failed. Um, the Mark II can carry more junk? I don't know, Lagadder. I don't know. Uh, when is Boeing retrying? Hanny is asking when is Boeing retrying their thing? I don't know. This week was all about SpaceX. Boeing is going to retry their test. It's probably not going to be for a while. We kind of make it a habit to not talk about future missions because then it can kind of get repetitive. You know, if I talk about future missions and then the next week talk about the mission as it happened, but it will, it, it will, um, <laughs> It will happen. They are going to try their test again. 13 dragons were made. Nine flown th twice. Three were flown three times. So. No, the dragon wasn't turned into a septic tank. Just the trunk. Just the trunk. 
I, I believe it's full of, 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 of waste. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Keeper says, I believe some of the other cargo being returned includes a 3D organic printer. Yes, that's a thing. And things that were printed. Um, does the ISS... Larry's asking, does the ISS recover the water from solid waste like the Fremen do? I, I don't know what you mean by Fremen do. I don't think they recover water from solid human waste. I think... They do uh, reclaim it from liquid. They reclaim it from urine. Excuse me. They reclaim it from urine. And they actually just fixed within the last month or so. They actually just fixed or replaced a part uh, for that. So. Um, yeah. And then Kerbal goes on to explain. That the dragon itself. Like the inside of the dragon is not used for disposing of trash because it can it survives it's meant to take down cargo down it's the only craft that can take cargo back down um so it takes the science back intact inside the capsule that's how we know about the space cookies <laughs> and all the tests that they were running on the uh cookies that were baked on the iss that's how we can bring animals back generally alive from the ISS and uh, yeah the trunk takes old science instruments from the outside of the station back down and be destroyed in the atmosphere which is why I think that they also put other waste inside so yes just urine uh, astro wise Kerbal's like nope Cygnus takes care of US trash which makes sense Oh, Fremen are human subspecies from the book Dune. I haven't read Dune, y'all. I haven't read Dune. Uh, the Soyuz cannot return cargo. Um, this, wait, yes, I take it back. The Soyuz can return cargo. Kind of. But I don't know if they're actually used to do so. Uh, so uses in three modules. One module, the biggest module, the round module, um, that's used for trash disposal. And there's the, it's like most of the ones where people are in, it's kind of triangle shaped because that's apparently the best shape. Um, that's what people come back in. And if they're returning cargo, it can go back in that way. So, yeah. Uh, Ark says, they should resell those space cookies. There should be s space Girl Scout selling space cookies. The cookies took, like, I think three hours to bake all the way. I don't know if... I don't know how well they were baked. But it was wild. There are 20 Dune books. No, no, there was a 20, there, there was a 20, there was a commemorative tin on Doubletree's site, but, um, I, I don't know if it's sold out and the astronauts did get cookies they could eat sent up to them. But yeah, all the cookies that were baked had to be sent, uh, back down. So they had cookies, they had cookies, Hanny, trust me, they had cookies, because it is just cruel to bake cookies on the ISS and not um, and not have them have cookies. They were sent cookies. <laughs> Keeper Maps wants a cookie. I have cookies downstairs in the fridge. I should probably eat those. Put that cookie down. Uh... Yeah, the Raven Lillian. There were there were cookies baked in the ISS. They had this cool little module thingy, and I guess it was like a cylinder on the inside. The outside was a rectangle, and the cookie dough was put in these uh, silicone sheets 
with clips on the sides. So they can just be pushed into the... Uh, the whole thing was designed by NanoRex, so they could just be pushed in. And they were baked. And it was essentially like, how does microgravity affect baking? And how long does it take to bake things compared to on Earth? And it took a really long time to bake a cookie. And it... Yeah, it just... It wasn't... I wouldn't want to eat that cookie. But yeah, it they totally baked a cookie on the ISS. <laughs> they really did. Uh, they baked... I think they may have baked all five. Um... And yeah, the ISS does smell pretty gross from what we've been told. And I don't know if it made, if the baking made the thing smell less icky. So yeah, we need, we need cookies, lasagna, and apple pie. I don't have apple. Do I have apples? I might have apples. I don't have an apple core peeler slicer anymore. That sounds like a lot of effort. Sounds like a lot of effort. Do I even have a pie pan? I don't even know. Oh, thank you for the follow, Liam Green Jacket. Um, normally I would throw Cheerios at the dogs, but I don't. I don't have dog cam set up. The next company-based mission should be by for Breeze. <laughs> Broken Symmetry says I heard the cookies were crumbly. Uh. I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked into it too much since I first reported on it. Like, I know what happened. I was following it very intently because I'm like, I need to know about these cookies because I had really hoped that the astronauts could eat some of the cookies, but because they took way longer to bake than anybody thought, um, all five cookies were baked and sent back. I was really hoping the astronauts were going to eat one of their own cookies because that would be kind of awesome to just have a cookie to bake a cookie and then have it in the space station like for morale so yeah yeah i yeah and crumbs in space are really bad really bad uh when astronauts and cosmonauts clip their fingernails because that is something you have to do um they do it under this suctiony, air suctiony thingy, and they also have duct tape nearby. And they try to get the nail clippings on the duct tape if they can. They don't want the nail clippings to just fly out throughout the station. So it clipping something as simple as clipping your nails here on Earth uh, takes extra effort on the ISS. Uh, yeah, Astro-wise, they didn't get to eat any of the cookies they baked. Other cookies were sent up for them to eat. So they did get to have cookies, but they didn't get to have the cookies they baked. Um, bread isn't something that's sent up, uh, but tortillas are okay. Tortillas don't really have a whole lot of crumbs. So, Yeah. It'd be great if they had space-based cake mix for the birthdays. I'm thinking that might be a thing. That might be a long-term goal. I think that would be awesome for morale, just to be like, have some cake. But cake, cake, cake has crumbs. Um, Raven Lillian says, I am just visualizing someone vacuuming on the ISS. Um... That that may actually be somebody's job. Raven Lillian. Gem Doctor says, My nail clippers have a simple plastic thing that catches all the clippings. They may take those up with them, too. Um, but I, I don't know. I just remember reading that they tried to just get, them, get the clippings to stick on the duct tape. So Open Cage asks, What about flour? Um... They don't get anything, the only like raw foods that the astronauts and cosmonauts get are like fresh, <laughs> fresh fruits and vegetables when they're sent up and 
they are currently growing plants on the ISS and they can have some of those to supplement their diet, their um, diet. So I think the plant thing is pretty cool. It's some sort of leafy greens and yet yeah, flower can be bad. Flour can be bad and it gets everywhere. If you haven't baked, it gets everywhere. Haney's asking any basil on board. I don't think they have basil on board. I think it is mostly leafy greens. I don't know if they're planning on using basil. Um, I don't see why basil wouldn't go well as long as you um, kept it. If you've never grown basil, um, if you don't pinch the tops off, literally, you know, take your fingernails and pinch the tops off, uh, it'll go pretty straight up. So you literally have to prune it so it grows out bushy. And that's what you want it to do. Like if you ever get mini purple basil, which is, it's a really cool plant. Um, if you don't clip the, the soft tops, it'll just go straight up and be kind of that. But if you want it bushy, you need to essentially force the plants uh, to prune out. So no, limp rimble, no. Part of me is like, I should put you in timeout for that but I'm not going to. No, Limp Rimple. No. <laughs> Just no. And yes, uh, flour gets everywhere. If you don't bake, if you don't have your quarantine sourdough starter going, flour gets literally everywhere. It is all over my kitchen. And I currently have two sourdough starters. I have two sourdough. But yeah, it's, there's something called a bench scraper to even help get like flour and dough off of like flat surfaces. So yeah, no, no, I don't see them doing anything all around. And yeah, air, flour in the air is an explosion hazard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. All of it's pretty wild. Just send Puck around to sweep it up. It's on the counters. It's on the counters. I'm gonna have to just wipe down my counters. Also, never feed raw sourdough to dogs. Don't do it. All right, any other questions? Uh, my throat's getting kind of sore and I am still getting over being sick. And it's, it's awesome to sit and chat about all the wild things that happen in space. Cause I know, you know, we don't always get to talk about that, but <sighs> I need a break guys. I need a break. I don't know who's doing coffee in the morning. It might be me again. It might be Pamela. Uh, we'll see. This is going to be exciting. And, <laughs> um, Ark says, I should rewatch that Mythbuster huge creamer cannon again. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know who's doing coffee in the morning. So around 9 a.m. Central Time, that's 10 a.m. Eastern. Is it 9 a.m.? No, 9.30 a.m. Central Time. 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And 7.30 a.m. West Coast, and I don't know what it is in any other time zone. Um, we're gonna we around that time we start coffee hour, and it'll be either myself or Pamela, and we're just gonna sit and chat and whatever. Uh, so yeah, coffee is ten thirty a.m. Eastern, nine thirty Central, eight thirty Mountain, seven thirty West Coast. And yeah, yeah, we'll just have coffee together. Uh, tonight is Weekly Space Hangout. I think Paranor is simulcasting that. 1430 UTC, thank you, Keeper. Uh, I think Paranor is simulcasting that. And ah, 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 I know, you've been quiet this entire time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will see you all later. Um, again, thank you for all your support, 
Oh, thanks for the bits, broken symmetry. I think I just activated the dogs. I did. Oh no. They know. They know. <laughs> I'll get dog cam set up soon. But yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, thanks for all of your support. Thanks for your patience while we go through this crazy time. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So wash your hands. Wash your hands well. Wear a mask. Stay inside. Stay safe. I will see you all eventually. Have a wonderful insert time of day here, and I'll talk to you soon. Now it's time to awkwardly roll the credits, because that's how we roll. All right. Bye.